Welcome back to our examination of the book of Revelation, looking today at chapter 1, verse 3, which reads, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. The question that strikes me reading this verse is that if prophecy is all about predicting the future, how does one keep future events. Look, I'll focus in on two words in this verse. The first is the word which is translated as keep. It can also mean observe. So for example, have a look at these passages in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 19, where Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. It's also interesting to note that the word is translated as guard, for example, at Jesus' tomb in Matthew chapter 28. But then we turn to the word prophecy. Now, most often we think of this word as meaning the ability to predict the future, but there's more to the biblical word prophecy than that. So the lexicon gives us this definition, the gift of communicating and enforcing revealed truth. There are two parts to prophecy. There is foretelling, that is the prediction of the future. And then there is forth telling, that is to share or tell the will of God. Now a great example of that is in the Old Testament, the prophet Nathan. Nathan is particularly active during the reign of King David and he is active in a couple of different ways. He seems to act as a consultant for David in many ways. So David has this desire to build a temple for the Lord and he goes and he talks to Nathan who then talks to the Lord and brings back the answer. Nathan also acts as a kind of a voice of conscience when David has his sexual encounter with Bathsheba and gets her husband Uriah killed, it is Nathan who comes and confronts David with this and elicits his repentance. And the other way that Nathan is involved in David's story is ensuring that Solomon, his son, takes over the kingdom when David dies. The thing is that Nowhere does Nathan predict the future. If anything, he ensures a particular future takes place in the, the crowning of Solomon. But he always represents the will of God before the king and before the people. And it's that forth telling that earns him the title of prophet. So when we come then back to the book of Revelation, how is the will of God represented in this book in a way that we might keep or observe it. There's certainly not much here in the way of commands or physical things to do. There have been so many attempts through Christian history to read current events as though they are somehow predicted by the book of Revelation, especially events that are difficult or troubling. And the implication has always been that we are then able to predict what's about to happen next. But we've always been wrong. And so I think it's safe to say that the book of Revelation does not predict physical world events. You know, if there's one constant through life, it is change. And sometimes that is upheaval and chaos. So I think if we are to keep anything, it's simply to hold on to the life that Jesus recommends, which is the life of love to the Lord and love to the neighbour. And especially at those times when external circumstances seem to drive us in a different direction. But I wonder what you think about the book of Revelation and its relationship to the events of our lives. Do you feel that it predicts world events in some way? Or that we might be able to use it as a kind of a looking glass into the future? Do feel free to pop a comment below. I look forward to hearing from you and having a conversation. 
keep it friendly, and I'll see you next time.